Hey, good afternoon, everybody. From the Storm Track 5 Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist Dave Dirks. I want to let you know what we are tracking coming up on News 5 tonight, starting at 5 p.m. There is a severe thunderstorm watch that has been issued for parts of southwestern Virginia until 10 p.m. Let's go through that. This does include Taswell, Smith, and also Grayson counties of Virginia again until 10 p.m. Does not include northeast Tennessee or the remainder of southwestern Virginia yet. But Storm Prediction Center is indicating the top possibility that maybe a watch would be extended back into parts of southeast Kentucky and southwestern Virginia. That's what we're going to keep an eye on here over the next couple of hours. Let's give you a, kind of an overview of what's happening currently across the area. We do have uh, actually a pretty pleasant afternoon with the sunshine, a few Fair weather cumulus clouds. This is a live look on our Ashley Camera Network from Bristol Motor Speedway and a bit of a breeze out there, but we'll put the numbers on here. An even temperature at 80 degrees currently at the Tri-Cities Airport. A light variable wind less than 10 miles per hour. The dew point at 57, so it's not overly humid, but there is a lot of uh, instability within our atmosphere uh, with some uh, some wind energy as well as so strong uh, lapse rates uh, with the uh, cooler temperatures aloft, which will make for any storm that may be widely scattered that does develop to potentially have a lot uh, lift and produce some strong to locally severe wind gusts, possibly some hail as well. But right now it's quiet across the board with temperatures mainly in the upper 70s to low 80s, a little cooler across some of the higher elevations. But storms have been firing up to the northwest, uh, north and northeast of us. In fact, our Power 5 Doppler radar tracking several clusters of strong to severe thunderstorms across central portions of West Virginia off to the north and east of Charleston. And then that's kind of sprawling eastward into northern portions of Virginia. You can see several of these clusters are producing some severe thunderstorm warning indicating the possibility of some strong, maybe damaging thunderstorm wind gusts and the possibility of some large hail as, <coughs> as well as they continue to push off to the east at uh, a pretty good clip. But that activity at this point is not uh, showing any signs of moving into our area, but what we'll be keeping an eye on is back to the west. Possibly we'll see some development, especially toward the evening hours uh, across portions of southeast Kentucky and the southern West Virginia. And that would then slide southward to uh, give us that threat of some locally strong to isolated severe storms across especially parts of southwest Virginia. You can see the severe weather risk for today, and then that would be for this evening, is in the level two or slight risk across portions of southeast Kentucky and southwest Virginia with a marginal or low end risk across uh, the Tri-Cities area and northeast Tennessee and western North Carolina. Carolina. But this does stretch uh, the, that, that level two zone from near Abingdon and uh, to just north of Jonesville points northward. That's where that risk seems to be the highest. And right now, the overall tornado threat is very low, but we are more concerned of the possibility of some strong isolated wind gusts that could cause some wind damage. And that is in that especially level two zone where there is the elevated risk of some uh, strong damaging wind gusts with any storm that develops. Again, they may be fairly scattered in, in number, but uh, what does develop could be on the strong side and a fairly low risk of large hail at this point as we see it. But uh, as we get a broader view here, you can see the, the watch here that extends across Virginia, West Virginia through the mid-Atlantic. But again, we're keeping an eye on these storms that are not really heading in our direction, but in an area that is fairly rain free right now across areas of West Virginia and Kentucky. But uh, in this zone right here, we'll kind of keep an eye on as we go through the late afternoon, especially toward the evening hours for possible development in that little area that I kind of outlined in the white. And uh, that would be of concern, especially our, our future track showing that to maybe around 8 to 10 p.m. We could begin to see some, let's say around 8 p.m., 7 to 8 p.m. We could start to see some, uh, some activity developing here from near Pikeville to just north of Marion. And that may then blow up and uh, begin to increase in its its coverage here around Grundy, for example, north of Abingdon toward Marion and Taswell uh, around 10 p.m. And then those scattered showers and storms dipping southward may include parts of the northeast tip of Tennessee as well as we go through the midnight hour and then early overnight. And then overnight, uh, we may have a few scattered showers still lingering. But I think the main threat of any strong storms would be between 8 p.m. and let's say 1 a.m. Right now, the better chance for the Tri-Cities of seeing that shower or an isolated thunderstorm, this uh, mainly again for the Tri-Cities, this uh, particular graph uh, is uh, going to be around uh, midnight to 1 a.m., 2 a.m., perhaps a little bit earlier, of course, in the areas north of the Tri-Cities where the uh, future track is indicating the development could be a little bit sooner. So uh, join us coming up in just a little bit here. What we got now, we got uh, not too long before the 5 o'clock show. I'll have uh, the latest radar, uh, latest forecast models, and let you know what the threat of thunderstorms will be as we go through time the rest of the week because we may see some more scattered activity as we stay near frontal boundary that could keep things a little bit on the active side and warm the next couple of days. We'll see you tonight at 5.